First of all, many thanks to Stephanie, Leora, and Claude for their invitation to this symposium. Everything moves and evolves at every moment, so considering time seems really necessary. This is a principle of longitudinal surveys. Users can really measure differences before, after, and changes, compare different present times that are contemporaneous with their contexts, reconstruct a small and clearly limited story between these records, identify kinds of ways forward, evolutions, processes. But as we shall see, even if it sometimes appears as magic to the analyst, everything is not settled with longitudinal dimension. Some solutions appear very complex and new problems emerge. I think the objective of this symposium is to gather innovative propositions and reflections about it. I propose to address some of these points through examples of analysis of a longitudinal data set. Some years ago, I built with colleagues a qualitative longitudinal survey which followed a cohort of young people who were first recruited in three high school or integration programs. The aim of this survey was to understand socialization as a process involving people around and to explore how does life course influence personal networks and how does personal network influence life course. The survey lasted two years for the most part of the respondents and 20 years for some, as they were growing up as adults. I'm not considering here the fifth wave, as the procedure for collecting networks had been reduced there, and it's not comparable. For assuming this very large scope, we constructed an original set of name generators based upon contexts. This is wider than most common ones, as there were a total of 53 name generators based upon life contexts and X contexts. The mean size of networks is 37, with a maximum of 134 and a minimum of 6. In such a longitudinal survey, the same procedure of name generators is duplicated at each survey wave. Each interview was in two parts. First, a questionnaire to record objective facts concerning life course and to collect names of alters. Then we went back to the office. We compared the current list of names with the one of the previous wave. Thus, some new names appear and the others were no more cited. We identified these missing names. Then we came for the second part of the interview and we recorded the whole story of the respondent and his or her network in the meanwhile. Then when a transition or event occurred, we can examine which, which alters were no more cited at this wave and which are new, and which changes occurred with the remaining ones. We also collected a retrospective account about what had happened in the interval since the previ previous survey wave. This way, Changes are highlighted in both life course and networks. So we have different databases according to different levels. The one of Ego and his or her network, the one of all the alters, the one of all the alters at different moments, and the one of all the diets Ego alter at different moments and the transitions from a wave to another. Ego is repeated at each survey wave. Such he, thus he or she is considered each time, each time as a different observation. Certainly, there is no independence between ego at time one and the same ego at time two, but they are nevertheless different social individuals. At time one, for example, he is a student and lives with his parents, while at time two he works, is married, and has a child. They are not independent, but they can be very different. So for our questions, it is possible and important to dissociate ego at time one from ego at time two and compare them. The same goes for Alter. His situation has changed between two moments. 
So we have a file with all the alters of all the egos at all times. The network file is included in the ego files. It contains information about the size, composition, and structure of ego network. And the transitions file considers all the sequences between two waves with or without such a, such a live event. According to the level, we can make more or less relevant statistics or at least identify trends that may, may be precised after with recordings and interviews. Effects of time are diverse, complex, and they affect different levels. Many things can change in an interval of time. There are changes on ego, on alter, or their similarity or differences, on their relationship, on some characteristics of the relationship, on the whole network, and on some structural indicators. So, we added the waves of investigation in the base for each wave, and then each ego has several lines, <clears throat> one per wave. A, B, C, D, F are waves one, two, three, four, and six. Then for uh, the, the survey we are, uh, survey data set we are using here, we, we have 306 observations. We can identify for ego the biographical situations at each wave of the survey. Here we can see that the ego named Samuel was single in the first and second waves, then he met a partner in wave three, then he was single again in wave four. We can then sort between the egos in such or such situation at such way. Then we have an alter file. Each line is an alter of an ego at one survey wave. We repeat the information of this ego at this moment for each of his or her alters. Thus, here on the top, we can see the names of the alters of Samuel in wave one, A60, 60 being the code for Samuel. And in the bottom, we can see the alters cited by Samuel in wave two, B60, and so on. But we can also record these informations in width with columns. Now one line is one alter, and waves are added in columns for each variable, one, two, three, four, and so on. And variables are added for each wave. For example, we can ask question, questions like, is ego in a couple in wave one? Is alter in a couple in wave one? Are they similar? And in wave two, three, four, is it the same or not? And we also did it in slices, by sequences. A line is a sequence between time one and time two, whatever be the moment or the wave. Here, we repeat each alter in lines for each sequence, I mean pair of waves in which he appears. Well, all this has been made, been made in a completely empirical way and progressively as we went along. In the latter part, I benefited from the help of Claude Fischer, Schirraufer, and Guillaume Fab. Depending on the questions, we use one or the other kind of file. These are for files, but there are also network graphs and long interviews from one to, sorry, from two to 11 hours each. Thus, we can switch between all these materials in order, in order to try to compare and understand all these 70 stories and try to systematize and generalize some results. Let us detail some of these switches about one example, the one of Samuel. Seeing network graphs help understanding rapidly the network profile and characteristics and changes. Samuel's network in wave two is rather segmented in small components and isolated alters. His parents are divorced, his family is fragmented, and his childhood friend, friends are not mixed with friends he met during his studies. Three years later, Samuel met Emmanuel, 
and they are about to live together. His network is centered on Emmanuel, who is an intermediary with almost everyone, including in laws who appeared. But three years later, they broke up and Samuel's network is segmented again. So we can say there's a clear effect of coupling and separation on the overall structure of this network. Then, if we want to check and generalize this effect, we can take our files and compare for all the egos the structure of their network according to the conjugal situation. First, on one indicator, here the betweenness centralization of the network. It measures the concentration of the distribution of betweenness centralities. Then we can also uh, compute uh, uh, the difference about the global shape of the network here in six types. The effect of conjugal events on the network structure is quite clear here also. But these comparisons are cross-sectional analysis. They don't really take advantage of the longitudinal dimension. We lose the evolutions. Thus, we better compare sequences. Then we take the sequence file with all the transitions between one survey wave and the following one. Some respondents have just met a partner, partner in this interval. Others have started cohabitations. Others have broken up. And others remained in the same situation, whatever it be, single, partnered, or cohabitant. We can, we can see now the evolutions of the betweenness centralization of the network during this interval. Compared to the stable situations, partnership and cohabitation increase the centralization of the network, while breaking up makes it decrease crucially. These are comparisons on, of the network structure at specific compared moments, like kinds of pictures of the network at two present times at the moment of the survey. But there are different dimensions of networks to consider also. Network size, turnover, composition, are, are, are alters the same a long time? Do we have a replacement, a replacement with similar or dissimilar alters? And then the uh, ego alter relationship, it may have evolved in terms of context of multiplicity of strengths and so on. Then also connections or not with other alters, which ones? How are these characteristics linked together is to consider also. Are new types in a new context, are they weaker in uniplex, isolated in a component and so on? But let us stop one moment on the issue of the lost ties. To study lost ties, we must refer to ties cited at the previous wave, which complicates a little bit the processing because we have no information about alters who are not cited, cited in the current wave. Let me explain it better. In wave one, I got a list of first names. In wave two, I got another list of first names. I didn't show at this moment the previous one to the respondent. Later, but not at the moment of collecting the network. Then I go back to the laboratoire and I compare. I can identify new names, for example, Henriette and Jules, but I also see that some names of the wave one have disappeared. For example, Caroline, Leila, Francisco and Andrew. So in wave two, I can compare the old wave one alters here in blue and the new wave two alters here in red. I identified the lost alters, but they are not in this wave. They are in wave one here in yellow. So we are, doing, we are going to identify those who are about to disappear in the next wave. And it is the same for other waves. So in the database, we identify for each wave the kept alters and the new ones 
in step one, and then the will be kept on the will be lost next wave. So to see the effect of an event that occurs between two waves, coupling or breaking up, for example, you have to see it on two waves. And it is impossible to study homophily with lost tiles, for example, because it moved, it, it may have evolved, except with the very few stable covariates, covariates like gender, social background, meeting context. I don't see, see any, any other. Well, all these are my own odd tricks of the trade, and you may have better ideas for managing it. But one can feel unsatisfied also with these pictures separated by rather long intervals without knowing what happened in the meantime. And maybe some scholars like me can have the temptation to be closer to the time that passes. We can then also try to reconstruct the time interval that separated the two survey waves. What happened in the meantime? Who has perhaps experienced a lot of thing, things on the conjugal level during these three years. And, what's, and that's what we did with retrospective calendars, month by month, recording ego situation in different domains. It is a kind of attempt to switch from picture to film with a far greater precision in time scale for life events. And we also added the subjective key points the moments when ego experienced trials or had to make choices according to him or her. We can therefore draw more precise trajectories with a finer graining than in these pictures every two, three years. So we have built some sort of biographical freezes, one per ego, we have, there are three here. So we cannot see here all the details and they are in French, but you can distinguish sequences of studies in green, of work in blue, residence in yellow, and love in pink, and birth of children below in pink too. For example, for Susie. At a glance, you can see that love stories can be very diverse with a single long story for Susie or several very short ones for Joël or the progression from se several short ones to a long one for the knee. But let's go back to Samuel and continue his story. We can see here the temporal evolutions of his partnership course, two short stories of a month, then Emmanuel came. About his residence, he was first, uh, first at his grandmother's, then in the student's residence, then in an apartment with Emmanuel, during almost three years, and then they broke up only two months between the survey wave. And Emmanuel is still at the center of his network. She's in blue now, as she's no more a partner. With such freezes, we can better detect interferences between the domains. When ego gets into a couple, what's happening in the other domains? So it is very precise about ego's life, but we have far less temporal information about his relationships and his networks. There we have only the pictures every three years and some information about the beginning, duration, and end of relationships, but it is less systematically documented. Consequently, we have a discrepancy between the temporal precision of the life course and that of relational events. But we also have the interviews with systematic questioning about the end of the relationships, which we can read and record in order to integrate them into the files. We asked was why, no, sorry. We asked why Ego was no longer so in contact with the alters he had cited in the previous wave and not in the current wave. And we coded and counted the answers to come up to this table. In this account, for example, we have clearly network effects. 
And with all these answers, we can see that most losses are contextual for the first two items and maybe the third one or so. You can see also that social differentiation may be important at this age when, for example, ego studies and alter works or ego has a child and alter not, for example. There are relatively few conflicts. Spatial distance is often cited, cited, but mainly in addition with other items. So we can generalize the subjective accounts about lost ties and post them with different biographical and relational data. Some lost ties are cited again afterwards, and according to our question, we can consider them lost, even provisionally, when they are when we are analyzing, for example, the reasons of not citing him, or we can consider them dormant when studying the relationships or trajectories. But the timing doesn't have the same degree of, of objectivization as a calendar. Anyhow, it would be an illusion to imagine being in real time where well, we are not just in their life. However, this perspective effect due to the longitudinal dimension also appears at the level of the biography. At time T1, Ego speaks about himself in the present. He doesn't know the future. In the next time T2, we know the continuation. From that point on, aren't we going to reinterpret his point of view of time T1. For example, let us see the continuation here of Samuel's story in wave five. Two months after wave four, he's back with Emmanuel. So shall we consider they have broken up and partnered again, or that this couple made a pause? Their separation only lasted four months. So are we going to interpret this as a separation? Yes, if we are studying transition, because in wave four, in his present time, he saw it as such, he considered himself as separated. But if we are studying the whole life course, then we can very well consider him as remaining in a couple. It is the same in the case of Serge. He has a partner at each survey wave, but it's never the same one. And for Dimitri, in wave three, we captured his only months of singlehood, just at the moment of switching partner. Then it is important to remember that in this study, our survey points are entirely randomly chosen at the convenience of the researchers for our three years interval. And therefore, they are completely independent of the events in the respondent's biography. They may fall at moments that are insignificant compared to the rest of the interval. In other studies, the design of the survey is organized around the transitions, so it is different. Thus, the longitudinal triangulation of the points of view and the reconstitution of the interval can make us look at the data in different ways and lead to reconsideration of the situations. But the course of a life is rarely like that. It is more like this. There are different life domains involved, each with its own rhythm. Even so, it is more like this because social time is not regular. There are some more, more dense sequences in some moments, in some domains, and more stable sequences in other moments. And there's also interference between domains and between the situations, and also spillover and cascade effects. In a perspective inspired by Andrew Abbott, I consider sequences as complex and irregular and interactive combinations of ingredients rather than a linear and oriented path between one cause and one effect. 
And this leads us to the issue of causality. How can we be sure that the cause of the resegmentation of the network of Samuel is his separation from Emmanuel? Our hypothesis is that it happened just before the change. So causality comes from time scheduling, from anteriority. However, there are cases in which an anticipated event has effects before, before it happens. For example, when moving for a job or the coming of a, of a child, the cause is the job of the child, not moving. But there may be, but maybe there is also another event in parallel. In the same sequence, wave three to wave four, Samuel also stopped studying and started working. So which event caused this segmentation of his network? Separation? Or work or other events that are less clear transitions? How can we know? In sociology, the answer is generally in comparison. We compare with other separations of other people and with other transitions to work. With large numbers, one can detect the main effect of event one, of event two, and see cases in which they both occur. We can also study their forms of combination. In fact, both starting to work and breaking up lead to segmentation of the network. These two events are cumulative in this respect. But events may have other combined effects, as we shall see. And we'll see later during this symposium how modeling can help about it. But with my qualitative data, it is more relevant to explore what do people say about this. It is not an absolute argument, as people may have misleading representations, but it helps understanding the configuration of factors they had in hands at this moment. And let us see precisely what Samuel says about his separation and about the changes in his network. In the survey, people were asked, why did you change this way? Was there something else in another domain? And what was the trigger for this? If we follow the explanation of Samuel about the high points in his life course since the previous survey wave, we can see different interferences between domains that he considers contributed to his breakup with Emmanuel. Problems at work, family disruption, moving to the countryside and having a partner at university while he was working. There was a kind of heterophily and racism problems uh, with Emmanuel. All these elements converged toward, towards the breakup and towards his health issue, health issue, which is also the topic of this symposium, and towards the segmentation of his network too. And it is a convergence of factors that indeed produced the segmentation of his network. In-laws are lost. A lag appears with old friends who are in different life cycle periods with babies, for example. And new ties are single, like Samuel himself. And they were met in other contexts that are typical of singlehood. And relationships with colleagues are developed on their side, and they cannot be mixed with what he calls the word of the night, and another group appears, then according to him, the very way to meet people have changed with adulthood and especially working. So we have a cascade effect instead of a single cause for this evolution of the network structure. All ties are lagged and have disappeared, making structural holes. New ties cannot be mixed, and turnover increases. So the same relational change may have concomitant causes. Their effects are cumulative, like in cascade effects. Thus, scholars can try to isolate the, the, these causes, like in regressions, for example. Or they can try to see how these events are associated. How the second event, if inflects, 
the effect of the first one or how they both contributed to the same effect. In other cases, the combination is more of a coincidence. For example, while the September 11 attacks and the, her, her father's divorce are completely unrelated, it is their coincidence of the two, it is the coincidence of these two events that makes it so that when Sidonie, one of, of the young people of, of, of the Campanel, when Sidonie lost her job in tourism after the attacks, her father offered her to set up an internet cafe with him in Spain, as he is he's just uh, uh, divorced. So this is the coincidence here that was a, uh, that allowed her to have such a, a change in her life. And sometimes events have effects because they are lagged and ordered. For example, losing a job allows to move. In other cases, there is a spillover from one domain to another. For example, it was following the suicide, suicide of a friend that Elodie, another young people of the Campanel, Elodie dropped out of her studies and moved to Boston. An event which is not a transition provoked an effect that spilled over into a domain that is a priori completely external for Elodie. In other cases, two events counterbalance each other. The installation in couple mitigates the effects of dissociation of the network structure caused by migration abroad, for example. Then longitudinal dimension has something magic. You can really see and measure measure changes. There is a kind of unveiling effect, like, for example, when you switch to 3D with the added deepness of time. It's particularly stri striking on network graphs and freezes. It allows to advance towards the search for causality because it allows the comparison of different presents with the reduction of memory biases and the triangulation of statements, uh, statements and stories. But it doesn't solve all the problems and there are nothing miraculous about it. Instead, it is an open work in progress. So let's share it. And many thanks for your attention.